Hello Sunday School students and welcome to Sunday School Online. I am your teacher for this session, Deaconess Robin Miller, and I come to you by way of the Greater Bethlehem Temple Apostolic Church located in Cincinnati, Ohio. In the community of Northside, where Bishop James Chapman is our pastor, our First Lady, Lady Robin Chapman, and where we proudly proclaim as a church family, oh, look at you, you tried to beat me to it. Let's say it together. There is a God in Bethlehem, and Jesus, that's right, is his name. As is my custom, we're going to go over announcements while people come in and get their feet settled, ready for Sunday school. So there are additional Sunday school classes on our GBTAC Cincinnati YouTube channel. Be sure that you check those out. And adults, you have not been left off. Please visit our GB. TAC.org website so that, you, so that you can get the telephone number to participate every Sunday morning as the Lord allows at 9 o'clock a.m. on our telechurch platform where we have Cracker Jack teachers that are breaking down that word and allowing us to incorporate it and apply it to everyday life. Remember to like to subscribe let us know that you've been stopping by and i need to back up a little bit while you're on that gbtac.org website there are two telephone numbers that i want you to get one aside from the telechurch telephone number one get the telephone number to our prayer line you are not in this alone our pastors are standing by ready to pray with you ready to discuss the love of jesus and his salvation plan that he has for us that redeems us and brings us into right relationship with him the second number that i want you to get and um is our office telephone line. Please make an appointment. Speak with our pastor, Bishop James Chapman. Introduce yourself. Let him know that you've been stopping by the temple and you consider yourself a virtual member. So let me be the first to welcome you to the family. Along with that, let me clarify, for our gbtac.org website, our prayer line, you do not have to call just to discuss salvation. You are not in this alone. You can call with any prayer request, so I want to make that clear. All right, this is your cordial invitation to continue to be with us virtually or in person. We have the worship experience Sunday mornings at 11 o'clock a.m. We have Tuesday night Bible class, 7 o'clock, where we are delving into the subject matter of spiritual warfare. Oh, boy. Our, our pastor is breaking that down and you don't want to miss it. Do not deprive yourself of this rich word. Okay, we will see you there. So moving forward, it is time for review. Last week, we talked about many people seeing Jesus alive, and that was for Easter. One of our conclusion points was the Apostle Paul admonishes the Corinthian believers in his letter that they should hold on to their faith and believe in the resurrection of Christ. He provided two indisputable proofs to believe in the resurrection of Jesus and his gospel, one being the eyewitness experience from those that saw the resurrected Jesus, and secondly, the infallible, inerrant, trustworthy account of the scriptures that foretold his coming hundreds and hundreds of years previous. And one of the examples in our lesson from last week was Isaiah chapter 53. So our homework was to read ahead for today's lesson and answer the question, what does the Easter holiday mean to you? So I answered this question, okay?
So for me, the Easter holiday means first and foremost, celebrating the death of Jesus, because that is where our redemption lies. That is a part of the gospel, the salvation plan for us. It also means when I think of Easter, spending time with family like dinner and games, people dressing up, people just having fun and laughing, or just relaxing in one another's company. It also brings to mind for me sweet stuff. I don't eat chocolate, but oh boy, there is a lot of chocolate stuff, sweet stuff that's associated with Easter. A lot of chocolate candies like chocolate eggs and stuff like that or chocolate bunnies and things. And believe it or not, I also think about ham. I know that Jesus was Jewish. I'm not quite sure why I think about ham as a part of Sunday dinner for Easter, but there you go. That's what Easter means to me. That's what I think about when I think about Easter. Did you have some of the same answers? Oh, you did, but not the exact same. I get it. You know, that's fine. We'll have to share those with the class. So, people cannot see or hear what you're sharing outside of myself. So, if you would, please drop it into the comments. List one thing as far as what Easter means to you. All right, it's a deal. Thank you. So, you know what that makes you to me because you did your homework you are my homework hero and here's the plug if you have not been doing your homework if you are not a part of the homework hero team join the homework heroes there is a benefit to knowing the word for yourself. King David said in the book of Psalms, thy word have I hid in my heart that I would not sin, wrong, transgress against thee. So this week, we're talking about God comforts us. Our lesson text is found in the second book of Corinthians, chapter one, verses 1 through 11. And our golden text is 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. The purpose of us looking at this lesson is that we want to know what it means to receive and give comfort to others. So since we're looking at comfort, we need to know what comfort means. So comfort as defined in the Merriam-Webster.com dictionary, it had two entries that I included for our lesson. The first one, to give strength and hope to, to cheer, to ease, uh, the second in entry, to ease the grief or trouble of console. So comfort consists of what you need at that time. If it's raining, then an umbrella or shelter is comfort to you to come out of that rain and get away from that element. If it's hunger, comfort for you is to receive food to address that need. Again, yeah, you got it. If it's thirst, then water or some type of refreshing drink. If you're sick, it is medicine or something that's going to help you feel better. Like if you have the chills, having a blanket put over you or something to that effect. If you sweated out your PJs, putting on clean, nice, um, not wet PJs. So whatever it is in our lesson book, I like the way that they termed it. Comfort helps you to feel better. Jesus meets us right where we are. He's not going to give me your medicine when you're sick and give you my umbrella when I'm in the rain. He's going to meet both of us at the point of our need. What God has for you is for you and he's not going to mix the two. So, 
So what's going on in our lesson? In our lesson, we see that the Apostle Paul is addressing the Corinthian church with another letter. We finished first, first Corinthians, and now we're picking up the conversation in the second book of Corinthians or second Corinthians. We also notice that the tone of Paul has changed from being admonishing and very directorial to encouraging. And he's also including his companion that's with him, that's helping him, which is Timothy, who was known to the Corinthian church. Paul is relating their afflictions to them. He's being a little more touchable. He's relating their afflictions, their meaning Timothy and himself. He's relating their sufferings that they have been experiencing while away from Corinth, while on the missionary journey. And he speaks of God's comfort in these times. And he also shares that some of these times were so dire that they were near the point of death. He also refers to the prayers of the saints. This is something that we see Paul talking about a lot the prayers of the saints or prayer. It is important. And even though this isn't a main point of our lesson, I'm going to bring it out now. It is so important that we pray one for another. One point, does everybody have the ear of your mom and dad? No. Unless they are in the circle, a part of the family, everybody can't just walk up to your mom and dad and make a request of them the same way you can. What about your teachers? Can everybody walk up to your teachers and make a request of them? How about the supervisor? No, in relationship, we are able to make requests one of another and it's true as children of God we can go to God be in a relationship relationship with him and make requests one for another even people that we don't even know people that are in other countries can you think of one I kind of gave you a hint didn't I yes I don't know the people of Ukraine, but I can pray for their situation and God ask God to please help them because I am able to relate to their situation, knowing that I would not want my family in danger because I know what that feels like, knowing that I would not want my family without food, without heat without the comforts of shelter, understanding what that feels like so I can lift them up in prayer and ask God to touch their needs as well. So I don't want us to diminish that. Prayers of other people are so very important and I very much believe that you can think about people who have been praying for you. So just like Paul and Timothy experienced trials, life is a shared experience. We have trials today too. Maybe not the same ones, but we have trials, our own trials as well. For instance, because people reject God, they see Jesus in us and they reject us as well because that's who we represent growing pains, maturing, getting older. Oh boy, bodies changing, not just from younger to older, but from older to older. Going to different schools, making different friends. Oh, this is a biggie. COVID-19 over the past two to three years, Oh boy, that certainly exper that that affected our experience no matter where or what you were doing. In school, in work, in public, traveling, at home didn't matter. Our finances, our money, losing friends to suicide and accidents. I just saw something on the news this week where a balloon release was uh went on because of a 15 year old I think she was could have been 16 but I'm leaning toward 15 year old who died in a car accident she wasn't wearing her safety belt is what or her seat belt is what the news reported and oh boy her friends her family how sad they were 
losing family members trying to determine who we are i was born a boy i was born a girl but i'm not sure if that's what i want to be and society is telling me that i can make that choice after the fact even though god has already gifted me with that can you think of any more huh very good so you see we all go through trials i didn't even think about at the time siblings and being a part of our family dynamic and our families changing sometimes having to move all the time sometimes having to split up and live apart so it's hard to know the answers to these questions or even feel better in these situations when we're in them. So what do we do? Paul takes us to our golden text for today. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 4 in the King James Version who comforts us and that's a capital w meaning jesus or god who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from god Now, in the Phillips version, it reads this way. For he, capital H, meaning Jesus, gives us comfort in our trials so that we may in turn, or excuse me, so that we in turn may be able to give this same sort of strong sympathy to others in theirs. In other words, you know how we say that we love with Jesus' love, meaning what he gives us, we're able to give to others? It's the same way with comfort, the comfort that God gives to us in those really hard situations we're able to give to other people. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin jesus experienced what we experience in this life and is able to understand us and in the same manner we're able to understand and comfort others because of our like or shared experiences and with that comfort that we receive from christ have you ever been sick? You know what it feels like and you also know what the other person needs in that time of sickness. Have you ever had a headache? Whew. So you know what that feels like and you know how to comfort the other person like being quiet and not banging the pots and pans because you know that shoots very strong pain in the head to hear those types of sounds has anyone ever hurt your feelings so you know how to comfort and help someone else whose feelings have been hurt you can assure them you can console them you can offer hope to them in that same situation this same way with rejection you can comfort them because you know what it feels like not to be a part or made to be or made to feel like you're not a part of the group so you know how to make someone else feel as if they are a part you can comfort them you can console them In our conclusion, so Paul's tone in his new letter to the Corinthian church speaks of God's comfort in these times that we're so that were so dire, some were near to death, and he also talked about the prayers of the saints. 
Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15, the first clause. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Just as we are understood, we can understand and comfort others because of our like experiences and with the comfort we receive from Christ. So for homework to do, of course, read ahead for next week's lesson. And also, Paul experienced trials. We talked about that. What kinds of trials do we experience today? Name three that were not provided in today's lesson. Remember that listing? So name three that weren't on that list or discussed. Okay. So next week, we're going to talk about the title, Jesus Shows Us God's Glory. And our lesson text will be found in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 7 through 18. And our golden text, or our focus verse, will be 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. So the last word, ha, 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 ha. We wish a very happy birthday to our pastor. Now, his birthday was actually on Thursday, but it is not too late for you to send your well wishes to wish him a very happy birthday. So you see the address on your screen is being sent in care of the GVTAC church. So feel free, pause the video, write down that address and send your well wishes to our pastor. He would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for having joined me for Sunday School Online. So I want you to have a great day, make it a great day, and I leave you with my borrowed saying from Veggie Tales: God made you special. And he loved you very much. Join me again next time. Invite your family, invite your friends as we do, as we meet again for Sunday School Online. Bye.